Welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find the distance between two points, the midpoint between two points, and then do a little introduction to the conic sections. So let's start with the distance between two points. So here we have the points A, which is at negative 1, negative 2, and B, which is at 3, 1. So I've taken the liberty to plot this on a grid so that visually we can see how to actually find the distance. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a vertical line from B down to where A is, and then from A, I'm going to draw a horizontal line to where B is. And now I've created a right triangle. So with right triangles, we know that we can use Pythagoras' theorem. And that's A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So the vertex A, the opposite side is A. When the vertex is B, the opposite side is little b. And then our hypotenuse will be C. So what we can say is that A, which is 3 squared, plus B, which is 4 squared, is equal to C. And instead of calling it C, I'm actually going to call it length AB squared. So now we have 9 plus 16 equals AB squared, and then 25 equals AB squared. Square rooting both sides we can see that AB is length of five. All right, let's take a look at this concept more generally. So here we have a line segment AB. So let's start by drawing a right triangle. And we'll call this C. So now we know that AB squared is equal to AC squared plus BC squared. Or we can say that AB squared is equal to the change in x. And we want this to be a positive number. So we're going to take the absolute value. That'll be squared plus the change in y. Same thing. We're going to put in absolute value so that we get a positive number. We just want the change. And we're going to square that. So now recall that the square of a number is always going to be positive. So we don't really need the absolute value. But we put it there so that we know that we want this distance to be um, a positive number. All right, now I'm going to label these points here. So A, let's call that x1 and y1. And let's call B x2 and y2. So knowing that these two, what these two points are, then C has to be x2 and y1. All right, so now what we can say is that AB squared, so the change in x would be x2 minus x1, all squared, plus the change in y, which is y2 minus y1, all squared. So therefore, to find the length AB, finally, we have to take the square root of both sides, so now we have the square root of x2 minus x1, all squared, plus y2 minus y1, all squared. And this is the formula to find the distance between two points. So let's take a look at an example so we can strictly just use our formula here. So these two points, we're going to relabel them. Negative 1 will be our x1. 2 will be our y1. 3 will be our x2. And negative 6 will be our y2. All right. So we can say that the distance, d, is equal to the square root. And in brackets, we're going to put 3 plus 1, all squared. And then plus negative 6 minus 2, all squared. So the distance is equal to 3 plus 1 is 4 squared, which is 16, plus negative 6 minus 2, which is negative 8 squared, which is 64. And so then our distance is the square root of 80. And we can actually simplify the square root since um, 16 goes into 80. 
So therefore we get four root five. And that's how you find the distance between two points. All right, so now let's find the midpoint of a line segment. So uh, let's look at this pictorially again. Um, so we have a line segment with endpoints x1 and y1. So we'll label this x1 and y1. And b is x2 and y2. So the midpoint of this line segment would be approximately right there. We'll call that capital M. So I'm going to draw a right triangle again so that we can visually see this a little bit better. This point down here we know will be x2 and y1. So the midpoint here would also be the midpoint of these x values. So to find the midpoint of the x values, we're going to take x1 plus x2 and divide it by 2, which is an average actually. And the same thing for the y value. We know the y value is here, which is actually the same y value for the midpoint. So we're going to take y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So we're taking the average again of the y values and we'll get the midpoint y value. So this is the formula for midpoint. So let's just take one, uh, sorry, we're going to take one uh, look at one example. So find the midpoint between these two points. So we'll relabel them again. So this is x1, y1, x2, y2. All right, so we're going to take negative 1 plus 3, and then we divide that by 2. Same with our y values. We're going to go 2 plus negative 6 and divide by 2. So our midpoint between these two points will be 1 and negative 2. And that's how you find the midpoint of a line segment. All right, next I'm going to do a short little introduction to the conic sections. So the conic sections, uh, these are shapes that are created by slicing a cone at different angles. So here is um, a cone. Actually, it's two cones, uh, which are end to end. So each of these is called a cone. And sometimes people call this a double napped cone, or cones are called naps. I'm not really sure why, but you can look that up. And so um, the cone is created from the side of this cone, which is called a generator. So when we rotate this generator in three dimensions around this vertex, we actually get a cone. Uh, the middle line, this dotted line that's in the center here, is called the central axis. So when the generator is rotated, always at an equal distance from the central axis, about the vertex, we get the cone again. And the bottom is the base. And this bottom here is also another base. All right, now that I've identified the different parts of the cone, let's take a look at how to slice the cone so that we can get these four conic sections. So the first one is the circle. So if we slice the cone parallel to the base, like so, and then we lift up the top of this cone, we will see that the bottom of that piece is actually in the shape of a circle. Next, we have the ellipse. The ellipse is created when we slice the cone oblique to the base. So that is cut like this. Now important that when we cut, we also don't cut the base, otherwise we won't actually get an ellipse. So when we lift up this top part that I've highlighted, on the bottom of that piece, you will actually see a shape that resembles an ellipse. And the next one is the parabola. So the parabola is created when we slice the cone parallel to the generator. So remember that the generator is the side of the cone. So if I cut this parallel, like so, we're, and we lift up this piece right here, we will see that that bottom piece that's revealed is in the shape of a parabola. Uh, 
And then finally, we have the hyperbola. And the hyperbola is created when we slice the cone parallel to the central axis. So the central axis is in the middle, but notice that when I actually cut parallel to the central axis, like so, I'm actually gonna create two pieces, one on the top and one on the bottom cone. And when we reveal these two pieces, the part that you see will actually be a hyperbola. So the hyperbola actually has two sections that resemble something like this. It kind of looks like a parabola, but they're a little bit more wider. And this is what the conic sections are.